unusual solutions to unusual problems because we have an unusual God and we are unusual people. A royal priesthood A holy nation of people set apart. Unshaken with Dr. Zubin Paul Jacob. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, when people go to interviews in order to be selected to some work or even for education. There are certain criteria that are set. The marks that you have got in your examinations, how dexterous you are, how skilled you are, and how very intelligent you are. These are the criteria that normally are checked to see whether you are emotionally intelligent physically healthy and fit for this particular task that you are undertaking. And when you look at the life of Jesus and the life of different people in the Word, you find a different criteria of selection in the Word of God. We go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. And over there, we see the selection of a particular person. God sends a prophet. The prophet is a person who can listen to the words of God. And God spoke to this prophet Samuel and told him, I want you to choose a person, a person to be the king of Israel. And God sent Samuel to a particular house in a small village. So he comes to this village and comes to this house and meets the father and tells him, look, God has sent me over here to choose a person to be the king of Israel. And it happens to be one of your sons. So he asked the father to bring his sons forward. And the father was very happy. The father brought the eldest of the children a very handsome and tall person with a great personality. He was brought before Samuel and Samuel said, this is not the person I discern. this is not the person. And then he brought the next one. And Samuel again was inspired by God to tell him that this is not the person whom God has chosen. So one by one, the father brought each of these sons and each time God spoke to Samuel and said, this is not the person that I have chosen. And finally, the father stopped flabbergasted and, you know, sad that none of his children were chosen. So Samuel waited and the father was not moving and Samuel asked, aren't you having any more children? And suddenly the father remembers there is another son. And that son was in the fields. He was not at home. You see, the father had even forgotten that such a son existed because this son was not of great worth to the father. And he was sent because he was not so smart as the others. He was sent to take care of the sheep. And he was far away somewhere taking care of the sheep. So Samuel said, call this particular son. And this son was called and the son came, and as soon as he came in, Samuel discerned, God spoke to Samuel that this is the person that I have chosen to be the king of Israel. Anoint him. So Samuel anoints this person, this son, the youngest of them, as the king, to become the king of Israel. This person was David. You see the criteria of God's choice. This son, David, was not even worthy 
in the eyes of his own father. And the father forgot that there was a son like him. And God chooses this person whom even the father never chose. You see, in the Bible, different personalities chosen by God. What was the criteria of David? He was not seemingly very worthy in the eyes of the world, in the eyes of his father. Many of us who come before God, when we look at our own lives, we find that we do not have the smartness, we do not have the criteria that would really make us worthy to be chosen for particular tasks. And if you look at the criteria that the world chooses today to choose people for particular tasks, we won't fit in. But God's choice is always based on something different from what the world is looking at. You look at the disciples of Jesus. The disciples, they were not the smartest people available. They were not, you know, scholars of Scripture who would know all the Scripture and who were great orators who were able to go and convert people by their oratory skills or their knowledge and wisdom. They were common folk, sinful people, fishermen, tax collectors and the like. So what was God looking for? In the book of Samuel again, we read in 1 Samuel 14 that God was looking at the heart of a person a person whose heart wants and desires God. And God speaks of David, he is a person who wants my heart. What I love is what he loves. God is looking for people like that, people whose heart desires God above everything, who are willing to give up everything in order to do the will of God. This God knows because God doesn't look at the externals. People look at the externals. How well we look, how smart we are, how great we are in our oratory, how intelligent we are by the marks we've scored in exams and the degrees that we hold. God looks at the heart. He says, let the children come to me because the children know the heart of the Father. They are clean in their hearts, transparent hearts, clean hearts, hearts that will choose and go after the will of the Father. God looks for such people people who will search for His will and want to do His will. Every choice God has made of people you see in the personalities of the Bible are not great personalities. God chose the simple, broken people. In 1 Corinthians we read that God chooses the broken. God chooses the foolish, not the wise. He chooses the weak, not the strong. He chooses those who are nothing in this world in order to shame the wisdom of this world. In order to shame the wisdom of this world, He chooses those that are nothing in this world. The choices of God are different. Do not look at your externals. If your heart is clean like a little child's and your heart desires nothing except to do the will of the Father in heaven, that is a person God would choose. A person who chooses the heart of God, who looks not at His will, but at the will of the Father and chooses to do that will. God would choose such a person. You and I are chosen not because we possess some skill. God chose us looking at our hearts 
And however broken we are, however we lack in any skill or intelligence, God chooses people like this and prepares them, prepares them through suffering, prepares them by sending them through the fire. He purifies them and then He pours His grace into them so that into that nothingness God would bring everything so that no person can boast and say, I did this or that and I achieved this or that because every achievement in the kingdom of God is God's alone. He chooses the nothing of this world in order to boast to anyone and say, it is my hand that has done this. God chooses the foolish of this world. God chooses the weakest of this world. God chooses those that are nothing in this world in order to show the power of His wisdom, the power of His strength that transforms this nothing into everything. He chooses you and me looking at our hearts. That is all that is the criteria. The criteria of God is that simplicity of a child. Let the children come to me. The heart of a child is a trusting heart. The heart of a child is an innocent heart. The heart of a child looks at the Father alone and says, my Father can do everything. And he depends not on his strength. He depends not on his skill. He depends not on his intelligence, but he depends totally on the Father. That is the heart of a child. The heart of a child always holds and depends on the Father. Jesus lived his life on this earth with total trust and dependence on the Father. He is our example. I have come to do the will of my Father in heaven. My food is to do the will of my Father in heaven, said Jesus. And God looks for people like this. People who will choose His will above everything. People who will trust Him above everything. Because on such a person, God can pour His grace to fullness. It is only into emptiness that God can become and pour His fullness and manifest Himself to this world. Give our hearts to the Lord. Give our lives to the Lord. Keep your hearts and minds, bodies and lives pure like a child. God looks for such people. Do not look at your weaknesses. Do not look at your faults. Do not look at your brokenness because God is not looking for these things. He is looking for the heart of a person and He sees beyond the external. He sees your heart, a heart of simplicity, a heart of love, a heart that chooses nothing but God alone. And you and I will be chosen. And as we are chosen, he will prepare us by sending us through the fire, transforming us into His image and likeness, making us useful for His kingdom, becoming carriers of His grace. We become not something of our own, but pure carriers of His grace, the perfect vessels to carry Jesus. That is what God is looking for, children of the living God who are truly called, they are the ones chosen, children, people of a heart of a child. You and I are chosen based on this. Let us give our hearts to Jesus. Let us keep our minds and hearts and bodies pure so that God will choose us and use us for all eternity. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the death Mark of the end. Turn back towards God. Rise up.